Hey creative friends, today we are going to paint this beautiful tree peony. Very simple, very short. We'll be using a couple of different brushes and we're going to refer from this wonderful book that I love. It's called The Book of Flowers, so let's dive right in. I'm going to show you the supplies that I'm using today. First of all, the reference book is this one I call The Book of Flowers and it's um, all the paintings by Pierre Joseph Redouard. And uh, it's one of my favorite reference book to paint vintage flowers. I have a link in the description below if you're interested in this book. But I am painting today this one here, which is a European peony. All right, so um, I just flicked to this page yesterday and I felt like I really wanted to study um, the petals and the uh, the shadows and the details. So this painting is really more like a study where I am pretty much trying to copy what he is doing but putting a slight twist um, on it. All right, and then for paper I'm using today is Medine Watercolor 100% Cotton Cold Press. Um, also a link in the description below if you're interested. It is basically uh, the same as Baohong paper. It's a sister company of Baohong Academy. All right, the usual paints I have in my palette here that I spray down with water and all my paints are again mentioned in the description below as well as this lovely palette that I use a lot all the time, my Shin Han 42 Well plastic palette. And for the brushes today, I will be using these three brushes. The first one is a size 16 filbert by Princeton Select. You can use any filbert brush that you have and a medium size filbert would be ideal. Uh, I then went to grab this silver black velvet size 8 and this was mainly for my leaves. And then I did use my size 6 round Princeton Heritage for I think the stems. And then, oh, actually, I did also use one more, which is for the details, my size for silver black velvet. And once again, most of these brushes are in the description below. You can go and have a look. So, yep, that said, let's jump right into the painting. Grabbing my filbert brush and going into a lovely mix of permanent rose, um, corally kind of pink, choose any pink you like. And I'm just using that filbert to create the first few petals and this painting here has actually only one flower so it was just my chance of you know trying to get the petal shape right and practicing using the filbert brush um, and I think I'm, I'm quite pleased with the result so far and I just went into a bit of darker uh, more a thicker consistency of that permanent rose because I want to create a bit of a shadow on the edge of that petal. And then when I'm happy with that, I just continue downwards to create the bottom petals using the side of my brush as well as the flatter bit of the brush. And you know, it's so important to get to know your brushes and how they work and how they feel with uh, each stroke. So take every painting as an opportunity for you to really study the kind of different marks a brush can make. So this part is the tricky part because you have some upturned petals there. So just take your time, study your, your reference and you might not even you know, get it right the first round. It does look a bit lopsided, but that's fine. I decided to go into a bit of opera rose to just you know, put a bit of highlight there to see how that goes and I kind of just left it as that. Then I went into my Dragon's Blood, which is like a rose uh, brown matter, I think, to create some darker, petally um, moments on the left hand side. So I deliberately left the right hand side a little bit more transparent and the left to be darker just to create a bit of interest in the painting. Using the really thin side of the brush, I went into a bit of green gold and pulled out some um, stems and branches. Um, always be nice and confident with your brush stroke. Even if you're not, it's fine. You can always go over again. And I'm choosing now to use my size 8 silver black velvet to create those long leaf shapes because I really want a nice pointy leaf. 
and I'm mixing a dark green there with I think I'm just using sap green with um, indigo mix and you saw that I dipped a tiny bit of pink into that green and that's always a nice way to create a bit of color harmony and it's always nice to have a bit of redness in the green right the contrasting red to mute the green a little bit so you saw how I made that one middle leaf there very very light and it's all about playing with values so try your best to you know vary the values meaning the light or darkness of your leaves and your petals because that's really like the magic of um, of water of watercolor really loose watercolor style at least all right so just keep working and going into all the leafy bits varying the different greens and the different values and just taking your time to just let your brush dance around the page and enjoy creating leaves and if you love painting loose florals more likely than not the leaves are just as therapeutic and enjoyable to paint as the flowers and that's what i really love about this reference book actually it has a lot of uh, roses that feature a lot of leaves so it's very leaf heavy <laughs> type of reference book um, and also because the book is, is, is of a painting, it's a realistic painting, it's not of a photograph, so you can actually really uh, learn how the masters have painted it, how Pierre Joseph Redouard did it. So just working on the leaves, going around my painting and being very generous with the super light wash of the green leaves, meaning it's almost, almost just water. I'm going to fix that little um, bloom there with a, a dryish brush to just soften that edge so that it doesn't dry in a weird, um, abrupt manner. And then um, I'm going to put a little green center now just to uh, anchor the eyes on, on a spot. I'm grabbing my size 6 Princeton Heritage, which is a stiffer, slightly stiffer but still quite smooth brush and while the petals are still wet I decided to see if I can work in some shadowy veins with a uh, uh, dragon's blood color which is a reddish brown just use any reddish brown and uh, just be careful if it's too dry and you do this it could mess it up and also if you just use too much water at this point it can create really strange blooms so just be um, you know careful with that now my painting is dry and I'm going in with some details not too much grabbing my size 4 silver black velvet round making a mixture of purpley mix which is usually I will use a bit of dioxazine purple and a bit of um, brown um, burnt umber or in this case probably use a bit of dragon's blood to make a shadowy mix and as you can see I am really just feeling my way around this painting using the reference photo and not following it to a T but trying to just work in some details and some shadows Putting the marks, you know, on the edges of the petal is one way to create shadows or using a slightly more transparent glaze to create some marks. There's a lot of doubt that can um, enter our minds when we are doing something new and uncomfortable and strange and you see I really sort of felt really weird about that that really dark dark sazine purple that I tried to like erase it with water but it's okay I just told myself I'm gonna keep going and um, you can always work it out through some form of balance through you know just putting more details but not too much 
I'm using a bit of opera now just to sort of give my whole flower a little bit of a exciting loud vibe and just putting more marks down of, of varying the consistency of the paint, of the shadows just using the reference as a guide all right so i am going and continue with marks sometimes it's good to just step away for a while and then come back and i'm actually really liking those darker um, marks that i put in the middle of the flower they're sort of like eyelashes right <laughs> all right i've decided to go in to um just give a bit of more uh, details to the leaves and there's just no one way you can do this. You can just play around, create shadows and you can make it as realistic as you like or as, um, as light as you like. But I'm using that darker mix of green and I have the shadow green, I have a shadow green colour, it's called shadow green or perylene green or you can mix up your own darker green with green mixed up with dark sazine purple or green mixed up with uh, indigo or even green mixed up with a bit of red okay so there's so many ways to mix a darker green just experiment to see what works for you now it looks, it might seem like a big hot mess now with all my details, with so many lines going here and there. Um, I think that was really what's going through my head. But now I've just grabbed a bit of that opera and I'm just dotting some of the leaves with that opera just to, I don't know, balance out the painting and give the whole painting a feel of uh, a bit poppy feel, nice pop feel vibe. Alright, take a step back, just look at what you've done and I just felt like I needed to, you know, just go into the flower one more time with a dark mix. I think I'm just use a bit of Payne's Grey here. Use your Payne's Grey or just get a really dark mix and I needed to feel like I need to make her stand out a bit more. See, I'm already calling her, giving her a agenda. <laughs> The flower is definitely a girl with these beautiful eyelashes. Finally, I'm just using a very a slightly damp brush with not much pigment and I'm just creating an, uh, these veins from the center of the dark bits of the flower to pull it up. And I just do that to, I guess, soften the edges and to just kind of like feel like everything can come together. Last but not least, we need to add those beautiful yellow stamens. So I grabbed my small brush, small round brush, and got into some Catman yellow. And then just going around the center with lots of dots, and then just pulling little strokes out from the center. And now she looks so good, so complete, all comes together. How can you not admire flowers? How can you not love painting flowers? Oh, I went in with a bit more permanent rose because I just, you know, needed to give her some makeup, some more like lipstick, I guess. <laughs> She's just so pretty already. Don't you think? And there you have it, European peony. And there you have it, simple, easy, with a little bit of detail. I hope you enjoyed this painting. Sign up to my mailing list if you want to get news and updates. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel, of course, if you haven't already. I thank you so much. I will hope to see you in the next video.